Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your host, Daniel Green. Please stop sending me news stories that are in the real world. We don't need to talk about the presidential election here. This is fantasy news. And before we go ahead and jump into it today, I just want to point out that I'm not shaving because it's November. No shave November's a thing. Stop. Stop talking about this in the comment section. Stop it. And in the first bit of fantasy news we're going to be talking about here today, we have a new fantasy series announcement from Tor. Tor is one of the biggest publishing names in fantasy today, and they have announced a new series called Moonfall is coming down the road from author James Rollins. Now, James Rollins is best known for his work in the thriller genre, but he does have some fantasy names under his belt, including the God Slayer series and the Band and the Bandish Pentology. He just published them under a different name. That name being James Clemens. You secretive man. They they have a synopsis of the series linked in the article, which I will have, of course, down in the description below. You're welcome to go check it out if you would like to see what is coming down the road for Tor Publishing. And while you're down there, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like, it would help me immensely here, and I'd appreciate it. But moving on into a little bit of early in the video adaptation news, but it's Lord of the Rings related, so I feel like we're all okay with that. The Lord of the Rings has put out an urgent casting call. I don't know why it's urgent. It's Lord of the Rings. You think they'd have everyone and their mother auditioning to be in this show, but they are just, they're urgent. I, I don't know. I don't know. They haven't said what the roles are, so I can't tell you much, but apparently they, they really need some people. There's a lot of faces in the series. Who knows if it's background warriors or the star leading role, but they need more Lord of the Rings people. Are you an actor? Are you in New Zealand? Go audition. Hey, Hello Future Me is in New Zealand and he's a Lord of the Rings fan, go audition. Go do it. If you aren't subscribed to Hello Future Me's channel, go do it now. I'll have it linked in the description. He's like one of the best people to talk about fantasy, Avatar, Lord of the Rings, anything on the platform. But let's go ahead and transition into possibly the end of the world news. Or Christopher Paolini is counting down for an unrelated reason. Either it's the end of the world or he has a new book series coming out. I'm not sure which, but we will know very soon because as of releasing this video, he has posted one. Actually, as of recording, he's only posted two, but by the time you're seeing this, I will assume doing the countdown he's been doing, he's posted one. And today, the day you're watching this, he'll actually have posted the release, I hope. Oh, I just refreshed his Twitter just right now, and he officially posted one. I'm gonna like and retweet. You're watching me do this retweet live or re pre-recorded. Stay tuned tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for the big reveal. Hashtag T-S-I-A-S-O-S. S-O-S. See, it's the end of the world. We're all gonna die. Or just another thing from Christopher Paolini. I'm okay with both. Now let's go ahead and transition into some more adaptation news, specifically for the upcoming Witcher show. And the article, which again, I will of course have linked down below. So many people still comment like, where can I say what I- It's always in the description. The Witcher producers have promised that all changes from the source material will be justified and earned. Also noting that mostly necessary due to the adaptation being in a different medium, of course, which is something we've talked about repeatedly on the channel here. If you're adapting to a new medium, you pretty much have to change things from the source material for it to make sense. It's an interesting article and again gives me faith for the upcoming Witcher show because the source material is great. The people in charge of adapting it seem to have a lot of understanding of what it takes to properly adapt something like this. Your leading man, Henry Cavill, is a big fan of the source material. The budget's high. Uh, Netflix really needs this to be a success. They're probably investing quite a bit in it. I don't know. I have I have high hopes for Witcher now. I tried to tamper my expectations for a good long time, but after everything we've seen, I'm just I'm just hopeful and I, I think I think it's at least going to be good. That's my prediction now. Calling it. If it's not good, I'll I'll call cut shut down the whole channel. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying I'm thinking at least good and in case you missed it yesterday because I did release the video at a different time than normal Brandon Sanderson did actually confirm a huge theory for the wheel of time community here Someone posted a theory involving the ending. I will not get into specifics due to wheel of time spoilers It's a memory of light very end of series like last scenes Spoilers and if you want to go ahead and see what Brandon Sanderson had in response link down below But it's very cool to see an author taking the time to confirm a fan theory that was posted on Reddit in the comments section. 
Thank you, Brandon, for being so involved with the community. I don't know, as a Wheel of Time nerd, it was just really amazing to see something that has been so hotly debated and contested in the community here finally get a definitive answer because someone got it right. I'll have the video card right there and a link to the actual post down there as well. And in fantasy quickie news, for my Dragon Prince fans, we got a behind the scenes look for season three. Disney announced they are looking to reboot the Tron franchise for their streaming service. Old heads in the community probably excited about that. Younger people probably don't care. Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck have joined the call for releasing the Snyder Cut, which, if for those of you who don't know, there's apparently a cut that director Zack Snyder put together for the Justice League movie that everyone claims is so much better. I wonder how much better it could be because I really didn't like the Justice League movie, but hey, maybe it'll be as good as people say and maybe it'll be released, but we've, we've pretty much had a lot of people saying, no, it probably won't be. And in the final bit of quickie news here today, The Boys season two has officially wrapped filming. Now in news, I actually just don't want to dive in too deep because it would take a good chunk of time and I respect your time more than that. I'm not going to go in deep to talk about every single date here. Basically, Disney has released a ton of dates for upcoming films ranging from the MCU to outside the MCU. Uh, if you want to check them out, linked to these articles down below. But if you've been biting at the jib or whatever the weird thing I said was that one time in that one video to see what the upcoming MCU timeline and other Disney related properties release schedule looks like, you officially have that with these articles. And now in the final bit of fantasy news we're going to cover here today, the Russo brothers, the directors behind the pretty much biggest MCU movies of all time have finally responded to Martin Scorsese's comments calling the MCU not cinema. And well, I still maintain that this was a nothing story to begin with, and it's been blown way out of proportion, and I don't think anyone involved really cares as much as the media makes it seem anymore. Ugh. It was interesting to get their final take. The problem is what they said is actually just in the written format. We don't have the audio. And a couple things they said could be taken as like sassy responses or is very genuine, depending on the tone in which they were delivered. So I've seen people tweeting about this, taking it both directions. One example of this is from Joe Russo when he said, but at the end of the day, what do we know? Joe concluded, we're just two guys from Cleveland, Ohio, and cinema is a New York word. In Cleveland, we call them movies. This, again, could be taken as like a backhanded thing or just a sincere him being like, look, Martin Scorsese's Martin Scorsese, and we just make movies we like. It just depends on the tone and how it was delivered, and we can't really say, but basically the synopsis of this article was both of the brothers saying, we think we make cinema. There's a great emotional response from the audience. There's these amazing character arcs, yada, yada, yada. It's cinema and don't be pretentious is, is a lot of it. I still maintain that this story, everyone has the opinions they're going to have. No one's going to change anybody's mind about this. Everyone's in their corners and they're going to be there forever. And I hope we can just all acknowledge that, well, if you don't believe the MCU is cinema, it's definitely entertaining. What I will leave this with is Anthony's last words on the matter. The other way to think about it too is nobody owns cinema. We don't own cinema, you don't own cinema. Scorsese doesn't own cinema. That I think we can all at least agree with. In conclusion, Christopher Paolini's probably counting down the end of the universe. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and I do quickly want to say I do appreciate you guys sending me opinion pieces uh, and wanting my response to them, especially if they seem to be kind of misleading about fantasy series or uh, authors, things like that. But I wouldn't necessarily call it fantasy news. So to meet in the middle here, I'm probably going to create, well, I am going to create a channel in the Discord server for people to put uh, opinion pieces they would like my response to. Because I understand that there is often people saying things about great fantasy series that are just not true but I don't think it's appropriate to respond to it in fantasy news where I'm not trying to go after people who are, you know, individually making statements. It's more about what's breaking for the genre. So if you're in the Discord server, uh, I'll go ahead and make a channel right below fantasy news where you can put opinion pieces uh, you might like my thoughts on and I'll try and respond there. Or if it's egregious enough, you know, it will result in a video like the ones we've seen recently. Thank you though. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here on the channel. And let me know what you thought of today's stories in the comments section down below. And check out any fantasy news merch if you want to support the channel here in a huge way. Have a good one, y'all. Peace!